Section 158 of the Lincoln Storybook by Henry L. Williams Is the world going to follow that comet off? Read for LibriVox.org by Andy Inveranen, Scotland Two gentlemen going by stagecoach from Dehot to Indianapolis in 1858 found one part of the vehicle occupied fully by a tall, countrified person, in a cheap hat, and without coat or vest, but a farm roundabout. They had to wake him up, but he was civil and polite enough in his unkempt way. They thought he would be a good butt for play, as educated folk were uncommon out there in 1847 and considered the untaught as their legitimate prey. So they bombarded the poor bumpkin with wordy pyrotechnics, at which the stranger bewilderingly added his laugh, and finally was emboldened to ask what would be the upshot of this here comet business. The comet was the talk, especially in the evening of the world as it was taken to forerun disasters. If the editor remembers aright, it was sword shape. That pretends war. The intelligent jesters answered him to confuse still more, and left him at Indianapolis. One of the two travellers was Judge Abram Hammond, and his companion who tells the story, Thomas H. Nelson of Terot, the latter, coming down after preening up, found a brilliant group of lights of the law in the main room. They were judges and luminaries of the bar. But who should be the center of the galaxy but the uncouth fellow traveler? All were so interested in the story he was telling that Mr. Nelson could, unnoticed, inquire of the laughing landlord as to the entertainer of these wits. Abraham Lincoln of Sangamonvale, RMC. He was so stupefied that, on recovery, he hurried upstairs and got Hammond to Levant with him. But he was not to remain unpunished. Years after, when Hammond was governor of the state, and he to become minister to Chile, Nelson was at the same hotel, Browning's, at the capital, when looking over at the party, welcoming and accompanying the president-elect to Washington, he saw a long arm reached out to his shoulder. A shrill voice pierced his ear. Hello, Nelson. Do you think, after all, the whole world is going to follow that darned comet? Footnote Donati's comment off. The words were Nelson's own, in reply to the supposed Reuben's question in the stagecoach twelve years before. No joke of a memory, that, for a joke. End of section 158 Recording by Andy from Inverarn, Scotland. M-A-L-Y-S dot W-S